How many friends have you made today? Chapter 2, Part 2. This one is when Luna and I defeated Discord, Celestia says with pride. It took a few hours, but eventually Celestia was back to her perfect figure. It always amazes Anon how she can eat her own weight and cake, but never gain a single pound. It's something about an alicorn metabolism. At a certain age, an odd thing called an alicorn blueprint is saved in their biology. That is why they stop aging, and that is how they always keep their looks through the ages. It also explains how Luna was a filly before, and then quickly grew to her current form. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking with it. So, you two defeated the ugly lawn ornament that brought me here? She nods. Then, you decided to gloat by placing him in the gardens. She nods again with a smirk. I think I might love you. They both suddenly started laughing aloud. They continued on as Celestia gives a non a basic breakdown of what each window signifies. Soon, they both end with her throne. Before Celestia could take a seat, Anon takes her place upon the throne. Celestia looks at him with a raised brow, and Anon points to a guard that is seated next to the throne. You! The guard looks over. You're fired! But- Anon points to another guard. And you! I bet you didn't think I saw you stealing from those orphan foals! Now, I would need- Anon was going to point at another guard, but felt himself being lifted out of the throne by Celestia's magic. She brings him over to face her, and he shrugs again. I got a little power hungry. She gives him a bemused look as she takes her seat. So you say. Though she held that bemused look, Anon can see the ends of her lips turning up into a smile. She then sets him down next to her on a pillow that she had brought in. So, what are we gonna do today? He asks. I need to talk to a few nobles. If you wish, you may explore the castle a bit. Though her voice was even and calm, Anon could hear the slight pleading behind each word. Can I be present during these meetings? Celestia lets out a sigh of relief. She hates having to meet the nobles on her own. Not that she couldn't handle herself, it's just... Well, it's really boring. Of course. She then turns to one of her guards. Who is the first noble? The guard pulls out a list with his magic. Blue blood. Celestia smiles at that. Oh, my nephew. Wonderful. Please, show him in. The guard gives a nod to another one over at the doors, and he returns the gesture. The door slowly opens as a single stallion comes bolting through. Ah! The stallion stops in place as he spots Anon. He looks at him, then back to Celestia, showing a good level of uncertainty. Celestia gives him a gentle smile and a shallow nod. Blueblood regains his composure and lifts his head high as he approaches the throne. Hello, auntie. He says in his canterlot voice. Celestia rolls her eyes. Come here and give your auntie a big hug, Blue. Blue Blood looks over to Anon, uncertain again, but quickly runs up to Celestia as she wraps him in her wings. Anon isn't really surprised by these actions. Celestia told him about Blue Blood before. He actually kind of feels sad for him. It seems that Blue Blood has a mental disability, usually causing him to act out at times and be very... antisocial to other ponies. Though he does like to spend most of his time with the animals in the garden. It's one of the main reasons Celestia even has so many. Also, Blue Blood is not actually related to Celestia. He was just found wandering the streets of Canterlot one day, and because of his special needs, most ponies wouldn't really adopt him. So, Celestia took him in as her own. While magic is a very powerful thing, there are just some things that cannot be helped. He tries to be a really good boy for his auntie, but sometimes he can't control himself. They both break their embrace as Celestia nudges her head towards me. Would you like to meet my friend? She asks Blue Blood and his face contorts to disgust. What, why would I want to meet a filthy- He bites his tongue. He didn't really want to say those things. Remember what we talked about. Take your time and breathe. Blue Blood closes his eyes and takes a few breaths. He then gives a few nods as he mumbles to himself. After a few minutes, he speaks. I would like to. A certain strain can be heard in his tone. Celestia smiles at him as she directs him to face Anon. This is Anon. He's one of my bestest friends. She speaks in a calm motherly tone, as if she were showing a foal his new room. Blue Blood looks to the odd creature that sits beside his aunt. He had never seen any creature like him in the picture books that auntie shows him. He's also never seen one of him in the gardens before, though he did kind of look like one of the monkeys that he liked to play with. Hi. Blue Blood says nervously. Anon gives him a gentle smile and slowly reaches for him. 
Blue Blood freezes up some, but watches as the creature places his claw onto his hand and pets him gently. Slowly, his nerves start to calm, and the creature wasn't so bad if he was petting him. Blue Blood loves to pet the animals in the garden after all, and being pet felt rather pleasant. Hello, Blue Blood. Anon speaks calmly. Blue Blood can't believe it. He's actually making a friend right now. Maybe this one won't avoid him like the other ponies do. Blue Blood then slaps Anon's hand off of his head. Don't touch me, you mo- He bites his tongue again as he moves away from Anon. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't- I, I didn't mean to- Celeste wraps Blue Blood in her wings as she gently coos to him. It's alright. Remember the exercise. Breathe in and breathe out. Blue Blood is in tears. He can't believe that just happened, right as he was about to make a new friend. The creature would hate him now and never speak to him. Though it is rather muffled, Anon can hear Blue Blood sobbing some. Hey, he calls out gently as Celestia flexes her wing to show some of Blue Blood's face buried into her chest. I'm not mad. Honest. Blue Blood looks over to see that the creature didn't really look mad. He doesn't look happy, but he doesn't look sad either. He kind of looks like one of the guards. Blue Blood likes the guards, and he always wanted to be one. R really? He asks. Anon nods. Really, really. Are... are we friends? He asks next. Another nod from Anon. Of course. Soon, Blue Blood's crying comes to a stop as he regains his composure. He looks up to Celestia. Can I... can I go to the gardens? He asks, and she nods. Sure. Take a guard with you. He nods and shows himself out. Celestia lets out a tired sigh. If only I had the power to help him. She says with a hint of sadness. She feels something settle onto her withers. She looks over to see a nun giving her a gentle smile. You're helping him. The fact that he lives in an awesome castle is proof enough. She chuckles some at that. I guess so. Did he hurt you? Anon looks to his hand. It's a little red, but no worse for wear. Nah, I'm cool. So, am I gonna get a first-hand experience on a princess's life, or should I head to the infirmary while you deal with the nobles? Anon asks with a grin. Celestia looks to Anon, then immediately turns to her guard. Next subject! Anon collapses on Celestia's bed. He doesn't even care that she's lying next to him. He just can't believe how mentally exhausting those nobles can be. You deal with that every day? He yells. Wanna know the saddest part? Celestia asks. Anon faces her and gives a small nod. That was a good day. Anon shakes his head some at that. You're really something if you can deal with that. Anon feels some shuffling coming from next to him. He opens his eyes and sees Celestia out of bed and walking towards the door. Come, it's time for dinner. Wait, dinner? Anon looks over to a clock and sees what time it is. Wait, we spent seven hours listening to those stuck-ups complain? Celestia chuckled. That we did. Thank you for enduring with me. Anon lets out a grunt as he gets out of bed and follows Celestia, mumbling harsh words under his breath. Will you stop sulking? Celestia scolds Anon. Anon sits in his chair and continues to grumble. Celestia will admit that her meetings with the nobles of Canterlot usually leave her in the same state. However, she grew used to it over the years. Hey, I could sulk if I want to. He counters. They both stop when the doors to the hall come flying open. One rather disheveled looking Luna comes stumbling in. It seems like she just woke up. Hello, Tia. She greets automatically. Human friend. She walks by them both and takes her seat. She then perks up and quickly faces Anon. Human! Anon's eyes go wide as she flies out of her seat towards him. They both go tumbling onto the ground and land in a heap of legs and forelegs. Anon and Luna have a pretty close friendship. Maybe not as close as Celestia's, but it's still pretty close. They usually talk in Anon's dreams, or sometimes during her court. She needed someone to practice modern Equestria on, and Anon was perfect for the job seeing as he never ran from her in fear. Luna, get off of me! Anon yells as he tries to untangle himself from her. A soft glow of yellow surrounds them both as Celestia helps pry her sister off of Anon. Luna, what have we talked about? Celestia scolds some. Do not attack the guests. She says with a sigh. 
You remember what happened last time, don't you? Luna looks to her sister aghast. You know well as I that we were at war with the Minotaur before my banishment. Celestia rubs her face some. That still did not give you the right to attack the ambassador that they sent. Can you put me down? Anon asks. Celestia sits him beside her as he continues to grumble to himself. Luna mirrored Anon's mumbles as Celestia lets a tired sigh out. Soon the servants came and placed their dishes in front of everyone. Anon isn't too sure, but his nose is picking up something that he hadn't smelled in a long time. Perhaps this will end your mood. Celestia says just before she pulls a covering away from Anon's plate. Anon looks to his plate with wide eyes. Could it be? This isn't what I think it is, R right? He asks, and Celestia giggles some. Send fresh from Griffiths. What is set before Anon is one of the biggest hams that he had ever seen. If it was any more ham, then it would have been a pig on a spit roast. He looks to Celestia in shock. Marry me, he says with stars in his eyes. She scoffs at him. Do enjoy it, Anon. He doesn't need to be told twice as he takes a long blade in one hand and a fork in the other. As Anon chows down, Celestia looks over to Luna. How is Night Corbin going? Luna doesn't show any interest in Anon eating meat. In fact, before her banishment, it was common for ponies to eat fish. One of her best friends was a griffin as well, so she never felt wrong by seeing another creature eat meat. Though, she will admit that it's still odd to see Anon eat both meat and vegetables. Usually, creatures eat one or the other. Fine. The cord is starting to pick up. Luna says with excitement. Good for you. So, anything not worthy? Luna chuckles a bit. I got a few complaints. A DJ set up a midnight club and forgot to soundproof the walls. Practically kept most ponies up. Oh, I've heard of her. Isn't her name Vinyl? Celestia asks, and Luna nods. Correct, sister. I had to stay up a little late, but I managed to settle things nicely. Good work, Luna. Celestia reaches over and nuzzles her gently. She pulls back and looks over to Anon. She can't help but feel her eye twitch as she spots an empty plate and Anon on the floor holding a stomach. Oh god, the pain! Oh, the delicious salty pain! He cries out. Celestia gets up and goes to Anon. Why did you eat it all? He grunts again. Hey, I see a white light. He reaches his hand up and touches Celestia's chest. Uh, uh, oh, that, that's you. Come, we need to get you to bed. She says quickly. Sleep sounds good, he says in a drunken voice. He waves at Luna as Celestia picks him up with her magic and walks out of the dining hall. Oh, he can be very strange when he wants to be, Luna says to herself as she returns to her meal. Celestia quickly sets Anon in bed and wraps him up. He lets out a long yawn and settles in nicely. You should really learn to take it easy, Celestia warns. <laughs> Says the mare who ate two boxes of cake, he jokes. Celestia shakes her head. I know I can metabolize it all in a few hours, but I'm not so sure that humans work on that same level. He waves it off. <sighs> a little rest will help me feel better. He yawns again. Celestia couldn't help but chuckle. I really had a lot of fun today, Anon. He chuckles too. I will admit it wasn't so bad. So, how would you feel about visiting here more often? Celestia asks. This might be the ham coma speaking, but I think I'm okay with that. Celestia's smile grows larger as she nuzzles Anon's cheek. Anon pats her head some just before she pulls away. Good night, Anon. Good night, Tia. Oh, and the real good sweetness begins. I really can't wait to see how this develops even further. I guess we're gonna have to find out in due time. Now let's hop on over to our royal donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and Ponyman. Courier Crucii, Delta Omega, Srix, RuneSlife9852, Dospo, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Cerberus, Goulash Eating Hazar, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F., Rainbow Dash, Teal'c Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, and Mr. ECU. Thank you all very much for watching this video. Live life to the fullest, and stay well fed.